It's ice cream season in the Northern Hemisphere and I thought you guys would enjoy a simple and fast step-by-step -step for beginners for this watercolor ice cream tutorial video. So let's do it. Hi, I'm Françoise. I offer tips and tutorials for realistic watercolor, oil pastels and gouache every week. I use my own still life reference for this ice cream painting, but you can download a line art for this for free from the link in the description. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at BlackFineArt to see what tutorials are coming to YouTube next. For supplies, I used Arche paper, cold pressed, 100% cotton, 300 GSM. One round basic paintbrush can do, but two will be more convenient. The colors I picked on the bowl are Art Philosophy watercolor tubes, red and Persian blue shades, and indigo or any other blue will work if you don't have Persian blue. For the ice cream, I used a burnt umber and yellow ochre. So just a few colors and all pretty common, but don't be afraid to substitute them with what you have. I start by applying red on the bowl, mixed to some water. It's pretty boring as it dries, so I decide to add more, and this time it's a lot more vibrant. I'm not bothered by the flashy looks of this bowl so far, as I know the details in the bowl will tone this color down a bit, but at the same time, I like it vibrant as the ice cream will be mostly brown in color, so red will look nice in addition. To make this bowl a bit more interesting, I add a cool color, blue, as a shadow. Try and stretch the paint into the red layer we just applied with a clean and slightly wet brush, as this will create a gradient between the darkest shadows and the red areas. Let's take advantage of this stage to define the shadow underneath the bowl as well. This will make this bowl look dimensional and more realistic. I make sure it's really dark right underneath the bowl and much lighter as I get away from it. We're going to use this blue shade again to define the shape in the bowl a bit more. Again, we want it to be really dark where the actual shadow is, but we need to fade this paint into the rest of the painting with another paintbrush so it looks harmonious. I accent those areas I shaded earlier and I add a few light marks in the center, so this red area there is not just plain red. It also helps suggest those hollow vertical lines we're going to outline next. I'm painting these lines now with my blue shade still as it suggests shadows and hollow areas in the painting. Let's not forget to emphasize the shadows in the insides of the bowl too. I wanted to paint just the bowl first for the purpose of a short clip I made with this painting, so I'm starting on the highlights of this bowl, even though normally I would paint the whole thing, bowl and ice cream, first, and highlight all last. I highlight strategic areas with white gouache that is pretty thick but mixed with water still. The top of the bowl, there, that curvy area is important, the area at the very bottom and the top and the bottom of the creases in the bowl. If you're not sure where to paint highlights when drawing from your own physical reference, you can check for similar subjects online and draw inspiration from that. For the ice cream, we're keeping it simple too with just burnt umber and yellow ochre. Using burnt umber will suggest chocolate and I found yellow ochre looked perfect for caramel. I apply a first layer of those in the places I want those flavors to be. As always, since watercolor dries very light, it's very bland this way. So I add another layer and this time we can really tell which flavor sits where. Feel free to do it as you want to, it doesn't need to be a certain way or identical to what I'm doing since it's ice cream. We want to make sure contrast is great here too, so I start adding shadows with burnt umber in the areas of the ice cream that are behind another scoop of ice cream. To manage this, make sure your burnt umber or brown shade is thick enough that it dries dark enough. I take the same approach to paint hollow areas, as there are very many of those with ice cream. The fun part is to add those chocolate chips with an even more concentrated mix of burnt umber. They look flat for now, but you'll see highlights will change everything for us.
Once it's dry, I start adding highlights on and around the chocolate chips first, and you can see it does make them look a lot nicer and realistic. I add highlights too on some parts of the scoops of ice cream to emphasize how curvy their shape is. It's the play between the dark areas we painted before and those light areas mixed in with the two layers of paint that make these look so good. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. If you did, please let me know by liking, commenting, or sharing this video. Also, please subscribe and turn on notifications to enjoy all my other videos and the future ones and visit me on Instagram at blackfineart for even more. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.